Tonight's news is full of alleged affairs and lies. Is Michelle Obama going to jump into the 2024 presidential race last minute? Representative Tim Scott endorses Donald Trump and President Biden speaks to Israel's Benjamin Netanyahu for the first time in over a month. Thank you so much for liking and sharing these videos. It really helps me out, so thank you so much. I'm excited to be able to go live with you tonight to bring you up-to-date news on stories that affect the way that you may vote, uh, that affect your opinion towards Nikki Haley, towards Fannie Willis, towards Donald Trump, towards Michelle Obama. So I'm going to be going through some big bombshell breaking news. Uh, these are all allegations, but so far, Everything is looking on the up and up as far as truthfulness and not as far as, um, you know, whether this is a good moral story. Anyway, uh, I see you guys over on the right hand side. Hello, hello, hello. And thank you so much for joining me tonight. After elections and caucus information, research groups then come in to do what's called poll post polling information where they go to voters and gather information by asking them, who did you vote for and why did you vote the way you voted? As you know, Donald Trump in Iowa won the state's caucus by a huge margin. When asked why people voted for Donald Trump, the highest ranking answer was foreign policy. Now, truthfully, I thought it was going to be the US economy or the Southern border. But the voters in Iowa were most concerned with electing the candidate they believe will keep the United States of America safe, avoid getting America into war, will remain a dominant force around the world, and will actually rebuild relationships with other government leaders around the world. Now, with this in mind, did people in Iowa choose correctly? Is Donald Trump the best candidate with the best foreign policy? Let me know your thoughts in the comments on the side or down below. I do want to hear from you. Uh, he is the only candidate that has actual presidential experience with foreign policy, but I'll have to, I'll, I'll leave that up to you to decide whether you think he is the best for the job or not. Now, speaking of presidents... According to the New York Post, many Democrats are getting increasingly nervous about Joe Biden's health, his ability to run the country, and his ability to beat Donald Trump this November. There are lots of rumors floating around that former First Lady Michelle Obama is preparing to have her name put forward to take over Biden's uh, electorates. Uh, during the Democrat convention this coming summer. Now, former President Barack Obama has already held private meetings where he confessed out loud that he does not have confidence that Joe Biden can beat Donald Trump. So if the former president who helped put Biden in the office is now nervous that he won't be able to retain that position and then pass it on to vice president or fulfill the four years, of course, he's going to put forward someone he believes can beat the former president, Donald Trump. Now, let me know in the comments down below, do you believe that Michelle Obama would be a good president? Let me know your thoughts down below. I, I would like to hear from you. Actor Alec Baldwin was indicted today on involuntary manslaughter for allegedly killing a fellow co-worker on the movie set of his film, Rust. It appears to have been an accident, but upon hearing the evidence, a grand jury has determined this case needs to go before a jury of Alec Baldwin's peers to determine whether he is guilty or not, whether he will serve prison time or not. Uh, that was a big story in the news today. The wife of Georgia prosecutor Nathan Wade is now attempting to subpoena District Attorney Fonnie Willis in an effort to question her during the divorce proceedings uh, for her court case to end her marriage with Nathan Wade. It has been alleged that Miss Willis had an extramarital affair with Nathan Wade, who has been in a, a relationship with his soon-to-be ex-wife for 20 years. 
Now, just today, Wade's, uh, Wade's estranged wife filed new court records in her divorce case, which documented bank records proving her husband did take Willis on extravagant vacations. Now, remember, he filed for divorce one day after securing his new job with Fanny Willis. He also lied on his divorce records about earning over $600,000 at that time. And now his wife, through subpoena power, has been able to prove that he lied, that he received excessive amounts of money, and then used that money to go on these lavish vacations with his new lover. So many are saying that this is going to throw off the, the uh, election interference case against Donald Trump down in the state of Georgia. Now, in response, Willis conducted herself in a highly unprofessional manner by accusing the estranged wife of attempting to harass and damage her case against Donald Trump. Now, surely this has nothing to do with hurt feelings after being cheated on after 20 years. This has everything to do with Donald Trump, according to Ms. Willis. Now, as it stands, Fonnie Willis is currently fighting the subpoena on grounds that it could interfere in the ongoing election case. What's funny to me is that Willis is accusing Wade's wife of trying to annoy, embarrass, and oppress her, but she hasn't denied the affair. Now, in response, Ms. Wade's legal team stated, it's regrettable that Ms. Willis has filed such an inflammatory motion, which has left the defendant with no other choice than to re respond forcefully and with supporting evidence in a case that is very personal in nature. Now, House Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene, who likely sees this as a perfect chance to save Donald Trump from paying hefty fines, is currently in a feud with Georgia's governor, Brian Kemp. The, the outlash came after Kemp refused to comply with Green's request for him to help cancel what appeared to be a corrupted case. Even though Governor Kemp did say she could refer her complaint to the state's, to the state's oversight committee, Green shot back stating Kemp is trying to wash his hands of any accountability because he himself has refused to criminally investigate Fonnie Willis. Now, additionally, there is no telling how long this uh, will take for an oversight committee to actually get anything done, which is why she wants the governor to intervene and to get this thing uh, sped up or expedited. Now, according to the New York Times, Republican Senator Tim Scott who recently dropped out of the presidential race, will endorse Donald Trump later tonight if he hasn't already. Now, Donald Trump reportedly has been seeking Scott's endorsement for a while now, and it seems like Scott is finally ready to give it to him, even though he had been saying he wasn't going to weigh in on who should be president. I guess he changed his mind, and according to the Trump presidential campaign, he is going to be endorsing Donald Trump himself. Now, over on the side, I see you guys saying hi and, and making comments. Um, I, I'm not ignoring you. I'll, I'll get to the news and then I'll say hi. But I, I did want to say hello to you guys and let you know that I do see you. Okay, now on the other side of the aisle, Democrats are now tempting Republican House Speaker Mike Johnson with their support as his right flank starts to sour on him regarding this new deal on the border to allow 5,000 illegal immigrants to come in every day and receive more taxpayer-funded benefits than even veterans and senior citizens that have paid taxes their whole life would receive. For instance, Democrat Representative Benny Thompson stated, our job is not to save Johnson, but I think it would be a mighty pity if he did the right thing for us not to support him. Up to this point, he's been a fairly honest broker. Now, with a government shutdown on the horizon, it's clear that Mike Johnson isn't trying to make more demands as he wishes to avoid a, a, a crisis. But this is what got him into hot water in the first place. He's supposed to be the second in command of the Republican Party. He's third in line to become president should something happen. And now he's siding with Democrats when it comes to protecting and defending the southern border. 
And with that being said, it was just confirmed that the House has passed a spending bill extension to avoid a government shutdown. Now, the main reason some Republicans are furious with Mike Johnson is because they wanted him to attach border security measures to the extension agreement, but he refused to do so because he doesn't want delays and he doesn't want ongoing fights. But let me tell you what he just did. What he did was get an extension passed, and that extension is the extension written by none other than Nancy Pelosi. So even though Republicans are in power in the House, all they do is give Democrats exactly what they want. Hunter Biden's attorney, Kevin Morris, has defended himself, stating that he had no ulterior motive to work with the president's son during the ongoing impeachment inquiry. In response to why he paid millions of Hunter Biden's debts and bills, he stated, my goal was and is to help my friend and client. In this country, there is no prohibition against helping a friend in need with no ulterior motive. I have loaned Hunter money to help him through his difficulties. When needed, we each have had attorneys separately advise us on these transactions. I'm confident Hunter Biden will repay these loans. Now, does anyone else think it's kind of suspicious that Hunter Biden's personal lawyer, whom he owes money for legal services, is now lending him hundreds of thousands of dollars, expecting nothing in return, and Hunter Biden doesn't have a job that creates the kind of income to be able to financially repay these loans. I don't know. Let me know in the comments on the side and also down below. Is there something suspicious about this or is it just me? All right. Now, here is the big bombshell story. And these are allegations. I, I'm, I'm not trying to spread rumors. I'm just letting my community know what is in the news today. According to the Daily Mail, Nikki Haley, who is running for president of the United States, has been busted for having extramarital affairs about 10 plus years ago. Now, she has these allegations coming out that she cheated on her husband, Michael, multiple times, both through sexual activity and emotional affairs and also things leading up to physical affairs. Now, according to communications consultant Will Folks, a 49-year-old male, and lobbyist Larry Marchant, a 61-year-old male, both signed affidavits in 2010 alleging that they had had sexual relations with Nikki Haley. Now, Nikki Haley denies the accusations and says that this was uh, released to the media in order to hurt her presidential campaign. But these two men have signed legal affidavits that they slept with her. Now, according to the Daily Mail, there may be more people out there, but these are the first two to come forward. And this is a bombshell accusation. Again, I want to be very clear. I'm not saying that she did this. I'm just saying that two men have said that she did this. You can go find the article. They go through details about dating, where they were, behind a restaurant. Uh, at a hotel in Salt Lake City during a conference, on and on and on. Again, I'm not here to spread rumors. I'm just telling you what one of the biggest stories in the news was today. Now, if this is true, this may not bode well with those who wish to vote for her. And Ron DeSantis was likely hoping that this would help him to get ahead. But as of right now, he's only pulling at 6% among voters in New Hampshire. And so even a bombshell story like this isn't going to help. So far, the only person who's been lifted in the polls is Donald Trump. Okay, now let me tell you about what's going on with President Joe Biden. Uh, Joe Biden has spoken to Israel's Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, for the first time in nearly a month. These two have not been communicating because Israel continues to want to clear Gaza, and Biden is saying, hey, we want to tell you how to fight your own war. At the same time, we're going to give millions and millions of dollars of aid to the people in Gaza. It's, a, it's an awful situation. Now, in late December, these two leaders were not on great terms. And Netanyahu did not like Joe Biden's recommendations on how to protect the people of Israel and how to go to war. However, according to White House spokesman, 
Jonathan Kirby, Benjamin Netanyahu has agreed to release uh, taxes they collect on behalf of the Palestinian government, despite their intention to send it to Gaza. So Israel has been holding all of this tax money from the Palestinian people. Now, despite the harsh disagreement on how Israel should monitor Gaza in the future, the United States has maintained that it will ultimately respect the will of Israel, but they are going to continue to apply pressure. And some of the pressure is they're about to give a ton of money to the Palestinian people in Gaza. I don't know what they're going to do with that because uh, the food and the water and the medical supplies can't reach the people most in need. So if money shows up, I, I really don't know what that's going to do, but that was a big story as well. Now, as the war in Gaza continues, the U.S. Pentagon has released a statement warning Iran that it does not seek further escalation in the Red Sea. Deputy Defense Secretary Sabrina Singh stated, we know Iran's hand is behind all of these groups. And so our message has been very clear. We don't seek a regional conflict. We don't want to see a regional conflict, and we certainly don't want what's happening in Gaza to spill out into a larger regional or wide-scale war. Now, currently, the Houthis are still attacking ships in the Red Sea, which is a, a sign of resistance to the Biden administration's acts of retribution. Singh claimed that uh, while America doesn't seek conflict, it will meet its word when it comes to action. So if the Houthis continue to attack vessels or military vessels in the Red Sea, the U.S. military is going to attack because that was their agreement for protecting that region of the world. Now, this is my news update for today. I want to say hello to uh, some people, but I decided to go live today. I would like to know, maybe let me know in the comments down below uh, or off to the side, would you guys like me to go live more often?